Well, that is a nice copper coin, but oh, oh, Doug, do you know what time it is? Uh, 45 up. For, who says 45 up, Doug? It's quarter I after. <laughs> who says 45 up, Doug? I do. It's quarter after, baby. What's up, guys? Court order here. Of course, Dog Tag Doug, Mexican Doug, Jane Fond Doug. We are coming at a special quarter after, Doug. You see how my voice went up a little bit? A special. Yeah. We did one last week, and uh, I'm doing the special because I wanted to talk about last weekend's event, the Show Me Pro-Am Treasure Hunt down in Greensville, uh, 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 Greenville, Missouri. Missouri. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. You're Sorry. Welcome. Um, we had such a good time. We're gonna we're gonna bring some guests on today. I'm gonna call them surprise guests because you never know who's gonna pop in. Got five guests coming on, which is gonna be interesting wow. to try to juggle all that. Um, while the guests are on, I'm gonna be doing a background picturesque slideshow because there was over 500 photographs of things that were found, including. I'm going to read a little list off, off my head, Doug. There was uh, cannonballs. There was U.S. belt plates. There were uh, eagle breastplates, Civil War error, uh, uh, black powder flasks, hundreds and hundreds of three ringers, you know, you know, mini balls, uh, old coins, old buttons. There was a bag, huge set of jailer keys, shackles, yeah. uh, shotgun and musket barrels. I mean, yeah. It created, when people are finding things, the aura that is in the air, Doug, just makes it so exciting. And everyone was just, I think, having the time of their lives. Well, Mitch and all of his volunteers should be proud of the event that they pulled off. Yeah, right? I'm going to I'm gonna do that real quick, Doug, if you don't yeah. mind. I'm going to bring in, before I bring in the first guest, just to kind of go over a couple of thank yous. So uh, here we go, Doug. Uh, and, and I'm going to say hello in the chat too. I see uh, Scott McClory, the Bandit, Freebridge Metal Detecting, Chris Heimsoth. I was hoping we'd see him there. Ken yeah. Hurst, who was at the event, uh, Peg Leg Detecting, who was at the event, Prairie Pirate, uh, Scott Cash. I might have said him. I'm not sure. His whole family was there. They were great. Yeah. Patrick Parker, Amanda Thomas, Dirty Paws Detecting, Rich Van Winkle, one of my moderators, and of course our good buddy. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. There's uh, uh, I can't even tell how many people Rich isn't here tonight. So, uh, but there's probably a lot. And thank you everyone for, for coming in. Um, let's start this little shindig, Doug. I want to set it up before our first guest come on. We're on a tight schedule today. Okay. I don't want to go five hours. Well, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Oh, thanks. Can you give me a hot uh, roast beef sandwich? Uh, yeah, be right back. So we were at, I'm just going to let this run and try to keep up. We were at the uh, Show Me Treasure Fest in Missouri, which was a fabulous time. The organizers were, were Mitch Barks and his wife, Renita. And there's Renita. Um, I want to thank them for doing a great job, as well as all their volunteers. Uh, this is Joe yep. Bell, who's one of the volunteers. He took all sorts of cool uh, aerial photos with, uh, you know, those drone things that are always just, uh, you know, so in, so impressive looking. Always um, sounds like a swarm of bees. Yeah, but it's cool because look at that photo. It Doug, is. as tall as I am, I can't get that shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to also thank the Cash family who, man, treated us like gold, Doug. They were volunteers. Uh, there was uh, Martha, Scott, mm -hmm. and Josh. Yeah, I mean, you see who really could could we have been treated any better? I mean, I, I well, they treated me like family. You were there's yeah. Josh who was carting everybody around the fields in, in the uh, the little uh, runabout thing, whatever you call that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a farmer. Um, and then um, Scott was pulling people around in this tractor, and what's so cool about the tractor, Doug, is he outfitted the trailer. With yeah. old church pews, so people could sit down. Um, you know, he had to build that that a thing. Hymnal. He built the whole thing. He was a volunteer, Doug. To, to he had everything there but a hymnal. So you know, Mitch owes him a nice barbecue this summer. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> um, but I do want to thank all the volunteers. I'm sure there's so many of them that you know I don't even know. 
Um, I also want to thank before we go keep going. The landowner, this is Mr. Kreitz, who owned all the land there that had Civil War skirmishes on there. Super nice guy. Apparently, he was like a local high school teacher, a science teacher. I had so many people coming up to me saying that he was their science teacher. It was a small, small town community, you know? Right, right. Super friendly guy. Um, before I was introduced to him from Renita, we actually bumped into him in the field. I got a little shot there. Um, and I have an extra picture up because sometimes when you take a bunch of pictures, you catch one that's really funny and, and I like to put the funny ones in. So the next yeah. one is, I don't know what look you're giving him. But he <laughs> we were having you like you're like from another planet. <laughs> he can't figure out yeah, what kind of you creature always you are. Get me on my best angles, don't you? <laughs> well, Jeez. sometimes, you know, you take a bunch of pictures. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, but, yeah. Super nice guy. So, uh, you know, to, to donate all his land. And when I bring the first guests on, I do want to make sure that any local people know uh, Mitch and Renita are asking, please don't ask him for permission to hunt the land because they're going to do the event there again next year. So Mr. Kreitz already agreed that he wasn't going to give permission. So out of respect for Mitch and Renita and Mr. Kreitz and the hobby in general, uh, try to refrain if you live in the, uh, in the area. Yeah. Um, I also want to thank before we start, um, Larry from action five, he's got a YouTube channel, Facebook page. Um, you know, try to talk to people, meet everybody and record the video. I don't get a lot of photos. Which one is Larry? <laughs> he's probably in the chat. He's going to love that. Okay. Um, but, uh, Mitch and Renita said I could use any of the photos on their Facebook page, which was nice of them. 90% of them were from Larry. So I reached out to him specifically. He gave me his blessing. So uh, thank you. Shout out to uh, Action 5, who actually found a really cool thing himself. There's a better picture of him with Brandon Carmichael, the uh, the nomad. And um, I think that's Claudia. Claudia, yes. And Not lastly, Doug, I got to thank Nokta. You know, without Nokta, we wouldn't have been there. They right. send us around the, the country to go to some mm -hmm. events. Uh, I love the equipment. I love the company. I couldn't be prouder to have a relationship with a detecting company. So huge shout out to Nokta for getting us out there and helping spread the word. Now, how about this family you got shown here? I saved yes. that family for last because this family, hold on, I wrote their names down. This is the Thompson family. The Thompson family, they don't detect they just enjoy our weekly show. So they drove an hour and a half just to go to the meet and greet to meet us. They made us homemade cookies. They made us homemade chocolate. She made big sheets of, of dried plum fruit from their farm, which I forgot to give you yours, Doug, and I ate both of them. So sorry. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, and all three of the little girls, I mean, as weird as it sounds, were incredibly enamored by Doug. I mean, they were jumping up and down giddy. I couldn't believe yeah. that you had any fan of, you know, like under grandpa. 60. You did. They were, they were, look at the yeah. little girls. So uh, I'm their grandpa. I don't know what it was, they, but you made quite an impression. I um, told them they, they reminded me of American Gothic with kids. With kids, yeah. yeah, with kids. Yeah. Um, Do you know who American Gothic is? I know, I know of them. I wouldn't say I necessarily have seen it. It's it's the painting, uh, the farmer. Oh yeah, the, the guy with the pitchfork with, with and the, the pitchfork. And it just reminded me of real country living. You know, they grow everything they eat. You know, they rely on their own efforts to provide for the family. And it's just, they're just a cool family. I, I was thrilled to know that they thought as much of us as they did. Yeah. I mean, they were super cool. Um, everyone we met there, like I said, the, the events usually bring out the best in people. Usually everybody gets along. There's a lot of friendship, helping everybody. Right. Uh, people trying to ID things for everyone else, help them with their machines. It's a really great vibe. If you ever get an opportunity to go to an event, it would behoove you to do so. And you might make some uh, some friends for life. I know we sure have, Doug. Yes, uh, I can't wait to go back next year and, and meet the the folks we met this year and maybe even some 
new uh, attendees. Oh, well, oh, Mitch and Renita told me that you were not welcome back. I don't know if I told oh, you. That. Oh, okay. Well, we'll <laughs> send going, uh, we'll send another rep. I'm going. I'm going solo next year. Um, yeah, the only thing uh, I got three minutes before the first guest comes in. The only things, Doug, that were a bummer on the weekend were uh, our Airbnb, which I told that story last week because there was yeah. a squatter living in the basement, which was just insane. Yeah. And the other thing, Doug, were those ticks. I must have pulled 30 ticks off me. And everyone yeah. I saw online just had, they were covered in ticks. Like for like a week later, they were still finding them. Well, yeah, I, I was shocked that Tuesday I was pulling ticks off of me. But we'll know next year, won't we? Well, next next year, you know, you, you soak the, the, the clothes and the permethrin. You try to get everything all set up because um, – I didn't think they'd be out this early, but they were in force, my friend. Um, we got two minutes. I'm going to say a couple more hellos real quick. Actually, before I started, I'm going to do a couple of people that we saw at the event. I'll start the slideshow in a few minutes. But, um, you know, real quick shout outs. Again, uh, Brandon, the uh, Noak to Macro Nomad that was there, incredibly helpful, held down the tent the whole time. Um, even though technically they're competitors, I got to say hello. Debbie from Mind Lab is there along with uh, Robert Lucky uh, uh, Apiers, I think. I just met him, Aperson, something like that. Super nice guy. I just don't know the names. Uh, the Garrett team was there, KG, Ringy, uh, Gypsy. They were there with Mark Hoover and uh, Johnny Hawthorne, who was like a super cool dude. I wish I was as cool as that Johnny Haw Hawthorne guy, Doug. He just looks smooth, you know, when he walks. Yeah. We look like two two potatoes. He's just like a smooth criminal. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Um, Casey Dittman from Excalibur Shovels, which I picked one up from. He gave it to me. I say picked it up. I mean, it was nice. It gave, I love it. I used it all this past weekend. I uh, can't say enough. I had the Excalibur uh, shirt on yesterday, or I would have had it on today. Uh, awesome shovel there. Chris Stapley. Uh, John Ramoska, Allen, Steve Cronwell, all of the Illinois gang that came down. Yeah, that we're looking forward to seeing next month. Ho I'm hoping so. We're going to see. Yeah. I can't spread okay. ourselves too thin, but we're going to try. Okay. Uh, Andy O'Neill was there with his whole family from uh, WeDigMetalDetectors.com. He was the one dealer there, and he looked pretty busy every time I looked over. Uh, Butch and Debbie from American Digger Magazine were there. Uh, Brandon Sutton from the uh, Kadoha Treasure Fest. I always pronounced it Kodaha. I was corrected. It's Kadoha. I always messed it up. It's yeah. my it's my it's my northeast accent. Yeah. Um, Missouri Mike was there. Fat Fool. Uh, Rick Landiker. Uh, Claudia was there. The Cassidy family who dug all your holes for you, Young Dustin. <laughs> we went out to dinner with I don't them. Know how I got that lucky, but I don't know. Yeah. They treat you like a prince when you go to these events. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Becky McKay was there, Ken Hurst, Carol Rio, uh, Mark LaCroix was there from Connecticut, from Connecticut, a fun guy, Scott Amarin, Marcy Mayer. I'm, I'm trying to remember the list. Um, holy cow. C Casey uh, Ewers from uh, Detect Michigan. Um, it goes on and on and on, but I want to bring in our first guest, Doug, because it's 730. I'm going to try to keep the show on the mark. What do you think of that? Stay on the schedule. Uh, that's great. I right, hear that. Let me see if I can bring it in this way so they can see it. So there. If you didn't see him yet, this is uh, Mitch and his lovely wife, Renita, who this was their very first hunt, Doug, you know, to go from not doing it or maybe doing it on a small scale to 300 attendees, yeah. vendors, land permits, porta potties, food trucks. It's got to be such an overwhelming task. And the guy had like a five star a plus event mitch how are you guys and are you still exhausted a week later i'm doing pretty good i'm not exhausted anymore i've got some rest since then and i'm doing pretty good i'm still tired <laughs> now i know mitch and i can't speak for your all the work well i was gonna say when i do something and my wife's a part of it even though i take the credit secretly she does 85 percent of the work yeah. Well, I've noticed that she's been getting 85% of the data boys and you did a great job. And you know, every time I looked up, she was, she was running around and not oh, that you weren't, crazy. but I'm saying like, you know, you were, you were the face of it. She was kind of behind the scenes and she was doing everything. We worked on this for many months before I got on board. I, I kind of 
I was hesitant and I, I told him, I was like, I think it's, I think it's a lot and it's really big and I'm unsure. And he took me to a couple of events so that I could kind of see what was going on. And I, I waited for quite a while. And then when I saw what it was becoming, I knew I needed to get on board. So I got on board and started helping with, with things a little more. I'm going to say that without her on a scale of one to 10, ours would have been a six before she came along. Once she got on there and organized our food and the porta potties. Now, if it had been me, there might've been one out there if we'd have got lucky. He's but, like, people can go in the woods. They can. <laughs> but, you know, because, but because of her, we got six. <laughs> I'm telling you, Mitch, it was a smart move to bring it in. And I don't know if Renita detected before the event, but I saw on Facebook over the last few days that now she's got a shovel, maybe a machine's coming in. He bought me a special shovel. You know, I'm short. So he bought me a special like custom and it was gold. A, a, Excalibur made her a custom shovel. Yeah, he, yeah. he calls so it the gold digger. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you're going to love it. I, I love mine. Yeah, I've used it. I used it when we, we went to Kadoha last year and that was my very first time actually at a real event. Um, but I had, you know, we had messed around in the yard. He's trying to teach me how things work and the numbers and, and I'm still learning all the time, but yeah, I, I mean, I love the, the, the shovel's great. The, the metal detector he had me using is great. I love the pinpointer. That's my favorite thing because <laughs> I never know where quite to dig yet. So I'm, I'm still learning all that. Those pinpointers are lifesavers and uh, <laughs> Hey, we're all still learning. You know what I mean? Like Doug, Doug only knows what like one tenth of the buttons on his machine even do. He's had it for two years. I know how to turn it on. That's about it. Hey, Doug, you are invited back, by the way. I, I, <laughs> oh, all right. We, we was in the green room and we saw that. And, yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to tell glad I heard it from you and not him. The pat out of the bag. Um, I want to bring in why I got Mitch in here. I'm going to do a little. Um, I kind of put together like a little, a little slideshow uh, sort of a thing because, like I said, Doug, there was hundreds and hundreds of pictures. So many so that let me actually let me set it up over here because I don't have it queued up all the way. I want I, if I tried to talk about every single item, who found it, the show would go on until six in the morning and I got to work tomorrow. Yeah. So I, I thought what we would I'm do really is tired. we would kind of play the slideshow while we're talking and okay. it'll continue to play if we veer off of the topic. So at least everyone can kind of see what was found. And, and things like that. Does that sound like a plan? Great. Let's do it. Normally, I work on a video for about seven to 10 days. I had about 36 hours. So it's not up to snuff, but when you're doing something live, that's what you get. So let me bring this in. I'm going to just start it off and saying that, you know, Mitch was nice enough to let some people hunt at the historic Fort Benton, which is a Civil War fort, you know, in the area. Um, whatever was found was donated to the historical society as it should be, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, you know, a civil war fort and guys have been hunting it for years anyway. Uh, we got there a little late because of our Airbnb nonsense, but I wanted to show a, a little bit of, uh, of this incredible fort. So let me cue this up. That pick right there, you're at the foot of the hill and the fort is actually yeah. behind you and more up to, up at the top. Yeah, I never even got up to the hill. We got there so late. We only had about 40 minutes or so. And I was so, I, I wanted to find a Civil War bullet so bad, I didn't even get up to the fort. Uh, well, hopefully next year we can get you up there. Maybe your plane won't come in late and, and all that. You had quite a quite a go. We there. didn't get there until like almost 3.30 in the morning. And then we had to be up at like 7. And there was a, there was a squatter living in the house. It was, it was crazy. No hot water. No hot water. Yeah. Um, this is the uh, gag. Did... What's that, Doug? I, I was just going to tell Mitch and Renita that I found a three ringer at the base of the hill, along with a um, a general service button. So we didn't really have to get to the top of the hill to find good stuff. Yeah, I do have a picture of Doug's because he rubbed it in that he got one and I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but th these are the guys that did show up. Um, you know, a lot of the gang, I see Mitch, Joe Bell, Mark Hoover, uh, Sean Robinson, uh, KG Ringy. I see Gypsy. There's uh, Brandon Sutton, Butch, Debbie. Uh, I don't know some of the people, but there was a there was a decent sized group there and they were all there hours before before we arrived. Right. Yeah. Some of those guys are from the 24th State Relic Recovery Group over at Springfield, Missouri. Oh, okay. Lance this is one of the 
the little cannons, Doug, because I just thought it looked cool. Like do this. Now, Mitch, I don't know this gentleman's name. Do you know his name? Is that Mike Dugan? I believe that's Mike Dugas there from Springfield. Dugan. Dugan. Okay. Dugan. Yeah. I got to him because, Doug, this was the very – he found right next to me the very first three-ring bullet that I've ever seen come out of the ground. So I had to include him in there. There's his three-ringer. I wish I knew all the different makes and models. We have a guest coming on later that I'm sure probably is chomping at the bit to tell me. Uh, I just thought it was incredibly impressive. I'd never seen one come out. Um, and then a few minutes later, Sean Robinson, who has a YouTube channel, Peg Leg Detecting, he found one as well as Doug within a two-minute stretch. Uh, those are there too. And then, of course, Doug laughing at me that mm -hmm. I didn't find one, and he smile, did. Smile ear to ear there. Yep. And if I would have found it and he didn't, you can bet your bottom dollar I'd be smiling at him. That's what you do. You got to bust your buddy's chops. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's the uh, general service. I don't know if that was yours, Doug, or Sean. I know you both found one. No, that's it. That's mine. It was broken in two pieces, the front and the back. The little tailgate wrap-up of everything that was found at Fort Benton that was all donated to the Historical Society. There was a really nice old Civil War spur you can see next to the uh, next to the horseshoe on the left. It's amazing all the things that we're still finding there, uh, yeah. and it's been hunted for for so many years. Well, like you say, there's every spot is never really hunted out. You keep going back. You hit at a different angle. You hit a um, you know you, you never know. And guys were pulling Civil War bullets out all around me. Yeah. And my problem is just like at home, I'm trying to film them all. So I'm not really hunting. And um, so now, I, I got to record all theirs. Now, let me get this straight. You've never found a three ringer. No, no, never. Oh, boy. They don't really have them up here. Uh, well, they do, but they're very rare. I mean, Doug's going to brag that he found one or two in a river, but they're very, there wasn't a lot of civil war activity. Um, we, we, we do have, or we did have uh, the Bucks County Brigade where I live, they were part of the uh, Peninsula campaign. And I'm assuming because I found them uh, by the Delaware River, they use them for weights uh, fishing. So, um, but we have them around, he just can't find them. Oh. There's not very many around Mitch, but in my defense, I've probably dug 300 large cents and maybe 25 reals and hammered silver and George Washington buttons. We get the Revolutionary War stuff, just not a lot of Civil War stuff. So you're probably jealous of us. We're jealous oh, yeah. of you. Just depends on where you live in the country. You know what? What when we I, see I you guys do a large scent. You know, yeah. we can't believe it. You know, it's just there's another large scent. We just don't have them. Yeah, yeah it's uh, we find buttons. large scents like you guys find three yeah. ringers, and you know, it's just the way it is. But it's nice when you go visit another part of the country. Now you have a shot to cross something magical off your list. That and the catfish, right? Yeah. Well, catfish. I, Doug, I tried catfish. <laughs> Renita told me they had catfish for lunch, fried catfish. Yeah. Right. Martha came by and she's like, he's never had it. I got to go grab a plate. No, I've never had it. And, and my intention was to continue never having it. <laughs> but they're so friendly and they're like, come on, come try it. Doug, it was darn <laughs> good. I went and got a whole plate of it. It was so delicious. So Sometimes when in Rome, you try something new and they are. you really, you know, it's really worth my while. Now, before I get into the slideshow, Mitch, I want to see the rumor is that you're going to do the show again next year. The same hunt, um, same location, I'm guessing, which is why we asked Mr. Kreitz. I say we like I had anything to do with it. That you asked Mr. Kreitz to, you know, not grant permission. Mm -hmm. Do you have any dates, time frames? What's your what's your thought process? March 28th, 29th, and 30th of next year. And actually, Mr. Kreitz volunteered his land for us um, at the event. He said, you know, this is so fantastic. I've never seen anything like this in my life. He said, you got to do this again next year. Yeah. And uh, we had set some land off to the side just in case um, we do do it. And we are. Uh, we had set 500 acres off that we didn't let anybody hunt on. And we know there was some activity there, too. So, well, bigger just, and better. Hey, just like Fort Benton, even the spot we were at with all the people that were hunting, I guarantee if we went back next year, you're going to still find so much more 
that's kind of how the hobby works. Even though, you know, even though it's been hunted and hunted, you keep going back and you're going to find more stuff, especially if you get a good rain the night before. Oh man. Mm -hmm. What a, what a hotbed of, of things that were there. Hey Mitch, um, uh, how many more people do you think you could accommodate uh, be, beyond the two to 300 that you had this year? Well, we're going to put the limit at 300 people. Um, it's a very big farm. Uh, it's a cattle okay. ranch. Uh, we did 1,200 acres this year. We're going, going to do 1,700. And the neighbor came by, and he was so impressed with all the finds that he said, you know, you guys can have my place next year if you want. So that's right next door. That's another three or 400 acres. That's oh, that's great. Farm. So I don't know if we're going to use his wow. land next year. You know, maybe that's in the future. But uh, the Trail of Tears runs, runs through his place. It's and nice the, to have it available if you need it. Yeah, oh, the, yeah. The neighbors just couldn't believe it. They just loved it. Uh, the, all the people coming out and everyone was so friendly and they just uh, they Mr. volunteered Price, their land. Yeah, Mr. Kreitz, was, he was so great. He, he came by and asked if he could drive his four-wheeler through. And it's like, his place. You yeah, know? It's your <laughs> car. I mean, you can do whatever you want. It's and your said, property. Boy, this yeah. is great. I hope we do this again. He kept saying that. I hope we do this again. So, wow. and, and yeah, he, he was smiling ear to ear. And, and you know yeah. what I thought was great too is that, you know, everyone there knew that he was the landowner and he was asking if he could see some of the things that were found. And, you know, sometimes a detectorist might not want to show what they found. But everyone I looked over was showing him their finds and Mr. Christ didn't want it, but his smile ear to ear to know all that was on his land. I'm so glad that all the people that did share, you know, at least visually with him, I know he appreciated it. He had a really good time and I'm glad that he invited you back with uh, open arms for next year. He invited us, the whole group of us. So. Well, that's a testament to you though. If there were shenanigans and, everyone was rowdy that invite mm -hmm. might not have happened it was a great group of people yeah really yeah. A great group. i agree yeah. we walked around the farm uh, after the event and no open plugs uh the fences were in great shape nobody made a mess uh just yeah. unbelievable it, yeah. you know consider you have 250 300 people out there digging holes and everyone put their plugs back that, that's a statement to to us and and what we was there for yeah, I agree. And, and I saw the same thing. I thought everyone was on really good behavior. I'd like to think that that's everyone's every day, you know, uh, the way they conduct themselves. Maybe it's the pressure of so many people around. Everyone knows each other. If I see, you know, John Doe doing something stupid, you know, you're going to have the whole community call you out on it. So you kind of, you do the right thing, even if maybe you wouldn't normally do the right thing. Right. Yeah. People very friendly. You know, we had a couple things that just would pop up here and there. Of course, we, you know, it's expected. Um, and they were super forgiving, you know, when there was a problem. And I'm like, I, you know, if it was something I could handle, I'll make it right. Just give me a little bit of time. And um, but for the most part, things went so smoothly. We're super, you know, we're really happy with how it turned out. I'm just super excited about how everybody, the positive feedback that we keep getting. It, yeah, it was it was a real highlight of an event. I mean, you would have thought that it was your 20th time doing it as smooth as it. I mean, I know there's very tiny hiccups. Our next guest who is in the green room is coming on one minute, had one of the tiny hiccups. But I mean, for everything that was going on, it was very minor. You guys really hit a home run. There was an aura in the air. You could feel it that everyone was just excited. They were pumped up. And even if you didn't find something good, Somebody would walk in from the field with one of the amazing finds and that kind of gets you psyched up. Oh, I want to go find a cannonball. Oh, I want to go look for a pair of shock. And then they'd go back out again. You're almost kind of re-energized. A lot of that's just a little bit of luck that the spot was good, but it was. Yeah. I, remember walking over, I remember walking over a hill and I heard someone shout way off. So I, I take off and I'm trying to get over there to see what they find. And someone else yells over there. Woohoo. You know, so I'd go over there and it was just constant. Someone was, hey, look what I found, you know, check this out, just the whole day long, both days. Yeah, it was. It was amazing. You guys really hit a home run. So, um, listen, Doug and I are definitely going to be back next year if we're invited again, of course. You're invited. Definitely invited. Uh, I'm sure Nokta will be there again. It was such a good time. I'm going to bring the next guest on, but I thank you guys for coming on. I thank you for doing such an amazing job and representing the hobby so well. Yeah, Mitch told me about a Doug. It was over a year ago that he invited me, 
He's been I working remember. on it that long. Yeah. So you know that every possible thing that he anticipated going wrong, he was trying to get ahead of the game. So a lot he of had, respect. It he was had not all together with bubblegum by any means. Yes. We appreciate you guys so much in helping us to promote it and all the all the sponsors. There were so many even clubs that came out and gave gave us prizes to donate. You know, they donated prizes to us to give away. We didn't even have a full list to name them individually. No, just, Some individual people did. Um, and we, we were so grateful for all of the help. I mean, everyone involved. It, 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 it was a huge team of people. And then everybody came together and it's super positive And it, we're just really happy with it. It was. Hey, Mitch, if you need any coppers to uh, throw out in the field next year, I'll send some to you. Or Are you going to buy them, Doug? Because you sure ain't digging any. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I did. All right, Mitch, Renita, thank you for coming on. I'm going to bring the next guest on to keep it going. But it was an thank absolute pleasure it. the weekend. And again, Great everyone, you. thanks for all your hard work. Thanks, guys. Yes, thank you. See Take you later. care. Doug, I like them a lot. Yes. Um, really good Great people. Job. Like I said, for someone that doesn't really had any experience with an event this size, what a grand slam they hit. It's a masterful job. I'm bringing in the next guest in 20 seconds. I just want to say a couple of hellos in the chat because I don't want to forget about them. Yes. Uh, Show Me Treasure is in the chat. Who is Chris, who I got some pictures coming up. Uh, Mark LaCroix, who I said. Mud, Mud Swat, Jersey Ray Diggs. Rachel is in there. Uh, Ken Brown, Daniel Brown. I got the wrong glasses on. I'm having a hard time seeing it. Uh, Louis yeah. Villarreal. Uh, K and May, American Digger in there. Butch, awesome dude. Yeah. Sharon, Bo uh, Bo Shannon Bortner. I'm sorry, wrong glasses. Uh, Magic Marty, metal detecting. Uh, Lynn Parrish. I thought I saw our Lynn in there earlier. He is, or she was at least. She's probably still in there. Wendy Olson. Yeah. Let me bring the next guest, Doug. She's two minutes behind. I hate leaving uh, running All off right. schedule. Stay on schedule. But there, there she is. This is Alicia. Alicia, how are you? Hey. <laughs> Alicia, I'm doing good. I'm so good to be here. Alicia, Doug, She's in her car now. driving to us, huh? <laughs> no, I'm at, my house. I'm at my house, uh. but it's like a million degrees in there. So it's like 85 degrees here. And I guess my air conditioning couldn't really keep up. And I didn't want the box fan to be a sound in the background. So I'm in an air conditioned vehicle instead. <laughs> now, if you don't know Alicia, I met her at the hunt for the first time. And I invited her on because, you know, trying to keep the show in a reasonable time frame. I wanted to have, you know, uh, one person from the uh, hunt organization, obviously Mitch, and Renita, I wanted to have one vendor who's coming on later. I wanted to have at least one kind of like representative of someone that was there digging all day, mingling. And she's such a bubbly personality. I thought she's a good person to bring on to kind of be the, the voice box for all the people that were having such a good time. And I'm also going to give her a plug because her YouTube channel, Hot Mess Fishing, either did hit or is about to hit. 2,000 subscribers, is that right? Yeah, I'm just, I'm at like 2030 now or something like that. But yeah, I just hit 2,000. Well, congratulations to you. Um, I know it's not easy, believe me. I've been doing it. It's not, not, not an easy thing. While we're talking, Rita, I want to start uh, a slideshow that I'm going to do. So I'm going to bring it up over to the side. Uh, and we're going to kind of just talk about some of the finds. Maybe you were there, maybe you weren't there but I wanted to go over some of the finds um, so that you can kind of see, because I know a lot of people probably brought things to you like they did to me. When you find something amazing, you want to share it. So that's going to kind of yeah. be uh, what we're going to go over. Does that sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan to me. So I know you know Larry, Action 5, who I said earlier was gracious enough to let me use a lot of his photos. But this is one I got because this is the first thing I saw found on the hunt day. And Larry called me over along with John Ramoska from um, the, the uh, Illinois gang. And he found something really cool. It's hard to see here, but he found a ceramic piggy bank in the ground. He may have hit it and smashed it open with his shovel. It's, uh, it was such a rare, interesting thing. And even though technically it was in the seeded field, Mitch didn't recall burying a ceramic piggy bank. It was filled with mo mostly modern change. I'm not talking like, you know, Civil War coins. But I mean, that's like a, that's just a pretty amazing piece there. He pulled a Richard Nixon, Doug, and 
Maybe uh, whacked it with a shovel. I was going to say that's who taught him how to pinpoint. <laughs> But he said, now, did you happen to see? I don't know if you were in the field when he dug that or not. No, I was I at the other end of the field. Yesterday. You what? I'm sorry. I, didn't know that. I said, I didn't know about it until yesterday when I saw a picture in the group. And I said, what is that? So this one was one that I actually missed. There were so many people and so many things going on. It was easy to miss, you know, oh, some well, of the fun. People were running all around. Yeah. Um, I, let me give a shout out to him. Let me see what else I got here. Hold on. These are some of the cool finds that we found um, that I happen to see. Oh, there's another picture of Larry and John, who was uh, couldn't believe it. He was taking a photograph of the smashed piggy bank, Doug. Yeah. Can't blame the guy for that. Uh, let's see. This is his name is Aaron. He found an incredible find. I don't know if you saw this, Alicia. This was the first of the U.S. belt plates that I saw. I saw like five or six of them. Yeah. Did you get did anybody let you hold them in your hand? Because I was just so excited to even feel one. Claudia found half of one. So she oh. has the you, I think. But I saw that somebody else had found what looked like the other half to hers. So I tried oh. to get them you know, to see if they had the you same one. You arm know. wrestle. Yeah, you arm wrestle yeah. or you thumb wrestle. Yeah. Thumb wrestle to see who gets she the other half. She all around the pool and she couldn't find you know, the other piece, but she was hoping. But I think I they may have each other. I found a cat bus quarter once that was cut in half by the plow. So I only had the bottom of it and all the guys came over and looked for the other half. And I said, look, if you find it, I got, I got, I got the chunk that has a date. I get the rest of it, but no, no. Oh, yeah. uh, let's see what else we got. I got so many pictures. I'm just going to kind of let it run. Uh, this is John from, uh, he's got a Facebook group, uh, Nemo relic hunters, really nice guy. I think his last name was cap. Uh, he also found a U.S. Uh, belt plate, and I got a picture of the back of his, which, uh, again, I'm no Civil War expert, but that looks pretty darn authentic and old to me. Yeah, so, real deal. Let's see what else we got here. Um, here's Chris Bark, who is uh, in the chat, show me treasure. Really nice guy. It's Barky. Bar oh, you pronounced the E. Yes, it's a, a long E, Barky. Okay. He found himself one of the eagle breastplates. I yeah. probably saw about five or six of them. I didn't even get – I got a lot of them on video. I didn't get a lot of pictures because, you know, there's 300 people there, and they're all finding stuff. It got overwhelming. But that was an awesome find. I know he was flying high with that thing. A little bent, but I, <laughs> hey, that's okay. That's kind of his haul. And why I got him up, Doug, I wanted to give him a shout out too, because oh. Chris makes these custom marbles, Alicia. I don't know how he does it, if he air blows them or what he does, but he makes these custom marbles and he sent me some photos of them. And then he told me, and Doug, oh, I made you something, but don't get too excited. It's not a marble. No, no. <laughs> I made these really cool um, uh, little glass, uh, I don't know what you call them, ornaments. You got one too? Yeah, mine glows in the black light. Oh, I wonder yeah. if mine glows. I don't know if yours nice or not. But yeah. Super talented, though. I don't even know how you even would make something like that. Does he blow them? Is that what he does? I just know that he makes them. I don't okay, know. Okay, that's fair. That's I have no idea. Yeah. I, if he's in the chat later, he can say, but a super nice uh, guy there, incredibly talented. Uh, this is Clayton and Corey, and if you look up close, they each have a cannonball in their hand. There was probably four or five cannonballs. Yeah. Did any? Did you hold any of the cannonballs, Alish? I am mad at myself because I didn't hold. I didn't get to feel the weight of it. You know what I mean? I seen them on the table. I seen them in other people's hands. Got them on film, but didn't actually get to touch one. Like to actually uh, hold it. I wasn't about to lose that opportunity, so I asked both guys, "Like, hey, you mind? You mind?" Um, they yeah, were incredible. This one is Corey's. I think it was an eight pounder. And then I also got one of Clayton's. I think that was also uh, an eight pounder. They were wow. tickled pink. I mean, obviously, I mean, what an amazing find that is. I was upset. Uh, nobody could come up with another one because I wanted to uh, show off my juggling prowess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you hold it, Doug? They were heavy. Can you imagine oh, yeah. coming yeah. at you? Yeah. 
I guess that's a solid shot. You know, some of the that's a solid shot. One was eight pounds and one was a twelve pound. Oh, one of those was a twelve pound. Yes. Oh my goodness. They looked about the same size. Would the twelve pound one look twice as big? Uh, not no, a sixteen pounder would be twice eight. Oh yeah, you're right. I got bad math skills. Um this is Scott uh, Amarin, who was one of like three or four people that actually found a gun barrel. This one was a musket barrel. Um, when I do the video, I got some close-ups of the maker's marks and all that. Uh, just a fantastic find. Uh, in the regular slideshow that I'm going to play, you're going to see a bunch more of them coming up. Um Another shout out here. This was uh, Roger Crandall, who is an engraver. And he made these little things for us, Alicia. And I don't know. I just thought it was super cool. They're like little tokeny keychain things. And he's got our names on each one. How cool is that? I have that on my video that comes out tomorrow. Um, when he actually gave it to you, when you're showing them to Doug. Oh, like yeah. Oh, we got to give you a shout out, yeah. too. Your in there, video so. for the event is coming out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 7.45 p.m. Eastern. 7.45 p.m.? Mm -hmm. All right. Make sure everyone, guys, go check it out. Hot Mess Fishing. She is a ball of fun, and there's no uh, there's no mystery to why she's throwing in these subscribers really quick. Thank you. I also got a picture of Doug. Probably ruining her video for tomorrow. I didn't know. No, yours are more up close and better. That's good. This weekend, I gave Charlie and Rich theirs. Uh, Chris, uh, your little glass ornaments, Doug brought them home, and guess we didn't bring them to the event to our hunt this weekend. The yeah, guys, I'll, bring, I'll bring them this Saturday. This weekend, he's going to bring them. Um, and then my absolute favorite one, of the, my favorite find personally of the hunt, Alicia, so much so that I put it in my thumbnail. This is Amber Lee, who found these shackles, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, not only were they awesome, Doug, but the look on her face, she found them about six hours before she showed me, and she was still shaking. Like, you can't, you know, that's the kind of excitement. You'll remember that the rest of your life. Oh, I pumped the mic. Absolutely. And I got a little video here, too, because I said, Cody, oh, that's the key sticking up. You can see that key by her right shoulder. Yeah. I said, oh, Amber Lee, do you think the key comes out? So I got a little video where she actually unscrewed it for me for the first time, I think. And got the key out, too. That's awesome. I mean, that was super. I mean, I've never seen wow. anything like that in my life, Doug. And I got a shot right here of them on the ground because when I got a closer look at them, too, it's hard to see. They're actually dated on the bottom, 1802, and it has some sort of a maker's yeah. uh, name on them. I'm not really sure. So um, listen. I'm sorry, to interrupt, but everybody in your chat keeps telling you that we're having noise issues. So I don't know. I'll mute myself to see if it's me. But if it is, I have my other phone going right now, and I'll come in on it. Um. But everybody says it sounds like we are underwater right now. Oh, okay. No, I'm pretty good. I'm not, I'm swimming. I can not swim. So I, I'm gonna move it, and then I want the people in chat to let us know if it sounds ahead, better. Yeah, and I'm I'm hear. I hear now that I'm quiet. Yeah, it's gone. It's your phone. Do you know sign language? A little, <laughs> but I'll come in on the other one. All right, come in. Well, actually, at least I'm going to bring the next guest in in a minute or two. I'll, I'm going to bring you about a minute over because I went a minute or two long with Mitch and Renita. But I wanted to say before I get on to the other ones, I wanted to thank you again for coming on. Uh, I want to give a plug again. It's scrolling at the bottom of her YouTube channel, Hot Best Fishing. Listen, guys, I like to think that everybody in this community supports each other. She's good people. You know, I, I messaged her as soon as I got home because I like her so much. She made an impression on me. And that's what it's all about. You want positive people. I like to be around people that lift up other people, that just have good energy. And that's what she is. So I know I'm a new subscriber. Maybe I pushed you over the 2,000. I don't know. Maybe. 
But I'm maybe on, I'm on Doug's side. Doug's late for the party. party. But at least I'm going to bring in the audio was messed up while I was on here. This is my brand new phone, so it makes me a little nervous that this is the first time I've been on StreamYard with this phone that I've only had for less than a week, and that uh, it's messing up. But um, but I'm so glad you brought me on here. I'm I'm thrilled to be up here and have the opportunity. Well, I think when you're talking about the game, when you're not talking about the game, I think it's the volume of the show. But, no, not sure but I'm going to bring in the next bring guest. Bring the next I thank you again I for coming you. on, and I look forward to seeing you at the next time. Thank you. I appreciate All it. Right. See you later, Alicia. Right. See you later, Bye, everybody. What do you think, Doug? Good people there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I can't Jeez. even think of um, – uh, we met so many people down there. Granted, we knew a lot, but we met a lot. Everybody was super – I wish I could have brought every one of them on the show tonight. But we would have gone till you know seven in the morning, and I just she was she was uh, perpetually smiling the whole the whole event. Oh yeah, yeah, nothing uh, but I, positive. I do hear the echo gone now, so I'm sorry yeah. if uh, is it still me? Do you still hear the echo, guys? No, no, it's it's gone. Yeah, I I think it may have been something with her phone. That's a shame. She just got the phone too. She broke her phone. She got in like a a fender bender or something with a truck and sure. broke her phone. And um, she just got a new phone. So oh. I'm sure she'll, uh, everyone's saying it's good. Oh, I see in the chat, Doug, before I bring in the next guest, Bells is in there. Uh, Detect yes. Michigan, who was Casey, I mentioned earlier. I see Turd Ferguson and I saw Clem Fandango, who are our British friends who last I heard last week were in New Hampshire. I don't know if they're New still Hampshire. over visiting or not. Yes. Uh, Peg Leg Detecting, who I mentioned earlier. Um, um, Ken Hurst, Chris O'Brien. Uh, Jim Hunt uh, from Green, Ohio, NEPA, History and Archaeology Search. Thank you guys for everyone coming in. I want to bring the next guest. Doug, I've never had so many guests before. What? We've never had so Why many guests. Why are you so popular all of a sudden? Well, I had to beg bar. I had to, I had to pay the next guy money. That's why, that's why I came <laughs> okay. on. But, Doug, I'm bringing this guy on. I'm really all excited. Right. I, of all the years we've been in this hobby, Doug, We've never met this next person. It's just one of those things. We just never cross paths until this event. Yep. So everyone, if you don't know him already, welcome Mr. Butch Holcomb, who runs American hey. Digger Magazine, Doug, the premier echelon of detecting magazines. Butch, how are you, my friend? I am wonderful. How are you guys doing? We are good. really good. I mean, I love the positive vibe. I can't believe in all these years we've never met you. I mean, I know everyone that you know. I know all the people. We just yeah. haven't crossed paths. This this was the first time at this event, and um, man, we quit. We quit good. We're um, we're all like one big family in this hobby, and you know, we we fortunately get along. Sometimes you don't always get along with your family, but y'all mm -hmm. go. I got along with everybody at the hunt. It was great. It yeah, was not great. only that, but but people were bringing things up to me asking for like ID help. And I don't know Civil War stuff. I kept sending them all over to you. So I was like, oh, I hope Butch doesn't get sick of me. I keep shuffling over and over to Butch. I I was just amazed because I had been told ahead of time that there were probably going to be a few natural Civil Wars, Civil War items found during the hunt. And I expected a, a few three ring bullets or, you know, something like that. And when I started seeing breastplates come in, and I just now saw the belt buckle, I didn't even see that at the hunt. And oh, that is the early 1860s um, stud belt plate, the U.S. They call it a puppy paw. But um, oh, that because of the three things in the back. Yes, that is um, <laughs> that's that's just an amazing find. I mean, I just the coolest ID I did though for anybody. A guy had a piece of sheet brass that had an eagle on it. And nobody could figure out what it was. And I looked at it, and it took me a minute to register. But it was part of a Colt revolver powder flask. Oh. From, uh, really? I guess it was probably pre-Civil War. Yeah. I have a picture of that Actually, coming up, Doug. In this I think cool that was found by Tim Smith. Yep. Um, the rest of the flask was gone. But if any part was to remain, that part with the eagle was the best to have. Oh yeah, that was the money shot. We like to call that, it. That was the money shot, and um, I was just I was flabbergasted, or as as my mates overseas say, 
gobsmacked at all the stuff that was being found. I mean, there was a lot of silver planted, of course, you know, and a lot of tokens, and we expected that, but I had no idea of all the, the natural finds that were going to come out of there. Well, you know what? I, it's a good segue is I want to introduce, like, like I said, if you aren't familiar with Butch, you know, you, you A, you live under a rock, but I'm going to bring in a little uh, Butch. Hey, hey. Butch, uh, he runs the American Digger magazine. It's the longest running. It might be the only one left. Physical. It's the only one physical magazine left in the U.S. concerning just this hobby. And it's such a and it's such good quality too. It's not like you cheap out. I mean, it's full color photos. Really nice magazine. There's good articles in there. One of my favorite things he does, Doug, is he does this just Doug section, which are if you found something you were super excited about, you'd write a little thing up, take a nice picture, send it over, and they might just put it in a future um, magazine, Doug. So I, I say that because there were some pretty darn good things found at this event. So, you know, listen, maybe it gets in, maybe it doesn't. Submit them on American Digger Magazine. It's uh, americandigger.com is the website, right, Butch? That's that's the website. And uh, if you have trouble submitting them there, you can also email me. It's real easy, publisher at americandigger.com. Or you can touch base with us on Facebook if you need to. But there were... Debbie Schiffer Blades, who I can't thank enough for um, being a part of American Digger Magazine. Her and I were working almost nonstop with all the people this weekend. And there are a lot of these finds that I did not get pictures of. So, mm -hmm. hey, send us the find. Send us what detector you were using. Say you found it at the hunt. And there's a good chance it could get into the next magazine. All right, yeah, you know, there's something really to say. And uh, talking about that, too, I mean... American Digger Magazine, he Butch has it available, you know, A, a physical paper magazine, but he also has it in a digital magazine where it comes out bi-monthly, right? Every two months, Butch? It does, six times a year. So if you're not the kind of person that wants a physical magazine, there is an electronic, it's probably a PDF that every, you know, you'll get with your subscription. But I still, maybe I'm old school, Doug, and you're old school. There's yes. something about holding a tangible thing in your hand that I just yeah, like. Amazing. Yeah, and there's not much of that left in the world. Yeah. I mean, if well, you're a metal detectorist, you have to appreciate that because the things we find are the last of the tangible things. There's not going to be coin money in 20 years, Doug. It's all going to be digital. That's right. like we're the last breed of tangible things. So what a great piece to get as uh, American Digger Magazine. You know, yeah. it, it is amazing because, you know, okay, three, four, five years ago, maybe a little longer, um, Western Eastern Treasures Magazine, which I always loved them, but I was friends with them. We both published the magazines. And all they were hearing from people is, go digital, go digital. So they went all digital with their magazine, and unfortunately, they collapsed within a year or two after that. There really? is a lot, a lot of people that still want a print magazine. And in fact, in our subscriber base, I would say probably three-fourths of the magazines we sell are actual physical copies. People say they want digital, but when they're offered the choice, they kind of surprise you. You know what? I totally believe that, too, because mm -hmm. when you're digital, you're competing with, geez, you're competing with Facebook and you're competing with huh. you know, YouTube and all that. But when it's a physical magazine, you have no competition. If people like looking at a magazine in bed, looking on it, you know, when you're like Doug does when you're on the John, you know, like people like that. And the fact that you still offer it is, 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 uh, is we, the most amazing part of it. That's. that's you notice, do you notice what page he's got? He's got displayed there. What, what's on that page looking at us? I, it's small. I on my screen. Eagle, man. Is that a what? flying eagle? <laughs> my nemesis. That's Doug's biggest bucket lister, but he just cannot well, seem to get one. Don't feel bad. I mean, we we find them um, very few coins confined to what you guys find up there. And in fifty four yeah. years, I've only found one flying eagle. Oh, so, look at that, Doug! Only one. Well, geez, if I if I live another fifty years, I might find there one. Yeah. There, that is yeah. your goal for life. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad to encourage you, young man. Like I'll tell my doctors that. Doug, I can sense that you're going to find one in the year 2063. So hold on. Oh, okay. 
Hey. Um, and you know, hey, I've got something for Doug too. You're talking about him, you know, taking it to the um the reading room, in other words, the bathroom. Um, it's a lot cheaper to replace an issue you drop in the toilet than a cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> I, you can even get back issues now. I saw on your yeah, website. You can. Um, we don't have them all. Some of the more popular ones have sold out. But we've been in business twenty years, and we've probably got I don't, I don't know a ton of back issues. There's some that are sold out of, but there's other ones we still have. And people collect the magazines because you guys were talking about what high quality it was. That's not an accident. We try to make them where they'll last and where you can actually put them in a binder. Or we even had one guy that was actually having his bound into a hardbound book each year. Oh, wow. And people really treasure these magazines, but they're built to last. They're built to go back and look at and um, use them like a reference book. I have a, I know I have about maybe four or five on my shelf that I, I've submitted things over the years. I, I, I've laxed off. I, I have to get back into it. Absolutely. But when that when that magazine came out and I ripped through it and I see my find in there, I mean it's exciting. You know, There's you can't nothing like it. And yes. well, how much different to me or to anybody? Okay, anybody can post something on Facebook of what they found or something. It's a dime a dozen, even though it's cool okay. finds. But how many people can actually pull out a magazine and say, Hey, look at me in this magazine? So yeah. you know, it's really kind of a big deal to get in print as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it is. It's really cool. It's hard to explain, but you know, and there's not a lot of options anymore. There's not a lot of magazines. There's not. So to get something like that, like I said, that's the biggest, the biggest allure for me is that it still is available yeah. in a in a paper magazine. So listen, make sure you guys go check it out. I'm going to bring you back full screen, Butch. Okay. At, uh, the website again at the bottom, americandigger.com. And Butch, also, I want to kind of give you a little plug because I know you also do a, is it a weekly podcast with yes, Jeff Luber? Yes, it's a weekly podcast. And we, I guess we're all about about being having longevity or something because we are in um, over our 14th year of continuous broadcasting. It's American wow. Diggers Relic Roundup. It comes on every Monday night at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And next week, next Monday, we're actually having the crew of American Digger goes to England. They were in England this week. It was um, Jeff Lubert, who is my co-host, also works with the magazine, was in England under the American Digger banner, and we arranged a tour over there. And in the first day, there were 12 people. The first day, there was 25 hammers found. Oh, my goodness. Really? There. Yeah, we're actually, we're, we're very blessed that we're in a part of um, England that hasn't really been open to detecting before the last few years. I think last year, my buddy that we go with every week, Charlie Harley, mm, I think Charlie he went with you. Up. Yes, he was. Charlie found some cool stuff. Yeah. You know what's funny about, is that? About 15 feet from a gold coin that was found on that trip. Yeah, he didn't get the gold coin. And no. I, I think he didn't get a hammered silver when he went over to England. But the funny thing is, Butch, <laughs> he comes back here and we, we're in a field in New Jersey he got his hammered silver in New Jersey. <laughs> Who would think it? That's that's like over when we were doing our trip last year to England with American Digger. Um, one one of the girls there. Um, and I, I know her name. But I'm not gonna say it in case it would embarrass her. But um, she hollers out, "I got silver! I got silver!" And she pulls it out. And it's a silver American half standing or standing Liberty half quarter i guess oh really that's but oh, still, yeah. but to go to england and find that i mean it's just there's something wrong it's almost disappointing to find yes, a silver head it it's a new. great coin but over there you're not expecting something like that now doug i mentioned the um i mentioned charlie yeah. getting the silver coin the silver cob because uh you know exciting news doug i don't even know if i share with you or not but we're going to work with Butch and do a collaboration where we're going to write an article for American Digger Magazine about our Cobb field and the things that were yes. found and the history of the area. Um, Doug, you're going to help me write it. I'm not much of a writer, but luckily Butch has good editors well, over there. Great editors. Fortunately, yeah, they're they're gonna, with it, baby Doug. hands, they're going to help us, Doug. But I think it's yep. a great story. Yeah. Um, Doug found something uh, incredible just this week. It just keeps giving up, Butch. So I, I know your listeners, just like at this event, 
when you see other people or you hear other people are finding things, it kind of motivates you oh my gosh. to get out and look. You know, one of the hardest parts of my job is when I'm sitting here trying to fight the deadline. I can't get away from my desk, and I'm having to look at all this stuff people have found within the last six or eight months and put it in the magazine. And I'm so happy for them, but yet I'm so sad for me that I wasn't <laughs> out there hunting. But I, I do that's, go that's anytime like, I can. Yeah. That's like, that's like Jason, me, but I run around and record all the guys' things. There, there you go. And I don't get to hunt, and then people will comment like, oh, Quarter hoarder stinks. Oh, that quarter hoarder can't do it. <laughs> That's right. You can't do and it all. You really can't do it all. And when you're so like yourself or me, I mean, you know, we dig when we can. Yeah, even at the can event, I, 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 I don't really dig. I find it's better if I stay by the tents. And then when people find the things and they bring them in, I can see them. Where if I'm out in the field, that's, that's a lot of it. Too, I'm going to miss them all. You know, people like you and, and, myself and Doug and a lot of the people in the chat and all here, we love finding good things, but we also love seeing good things. I mean, there is yeah. nothing like seeing somebody come up to you with their eyes big, holding a some kind of killer coin or killer relic or something straight out of the ground, the dirt still falling off of it. I mean, that's almost as good as finding it to me. Absolutely. We, yeah. we feel that if one member of the group finds something really great, the whole group appreciates it and celebrates with them. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone will have their turn. So be happy yeah. for the other guy when it's his turn. Yeah, that, that's right. Don't, um, don't ever hold a grudge about something. No, someone else no. good because if you do, maybe you aren't in the right hobby. Yeah. Right. You better exactly. be happy for your buddy. Cause you're yeah. going to, you're going to want him to be happy for you when it's your day. That's, that's right. And that time will come if you play it right. So, hey Butch, can can I ask Butch a question? I, I yeah, one I, more, and then I got a next guest, Dougie. Yeah. I plead ignorance. I apologize, but do you have a section of the magazine devoted to identifying? Oh yes. an item. Okay. Yes, asking you shall sure. receive. But yes, Doug, we have a we have um for years we actually had Charlie Harris, who I co-authored a book with, that was one of the relic or or all time any kind of metal detecting finds he could identify. But he passed away a couple of years, but we still have a section in the magazine where we put up things and ask our readers to identify it. And we've, dug, or we've identified it just by putting them out there for our readers because our readers, a lot of them are on YouTube, a lot of them, I mean, not YouTube, but Facebook, a lot of them are. So you may post right. on Facebook and not find out what it is, but you may send it to the magazine and here's some old timer or somebody that doesn't have a computer going, I know what that is. Yeah. So sure. it, it, it's identified. Yeah, so somebody out there knows it. everything. You just got to get it in front of their eyes. You you absolutely do. You absolutely do. And well, very, 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 very for that. Usually there's another item somewhere and somebody's seen it. Yeah. Sure. Well, Butch, I thank you for coming on. It's great. Um, we I gonna see you. Am I going to see you in um, Missouri next year, both you guys, I guess? Oh, absolutely. You're going to see there. us there. You might see us in October if you're going to the event wow. that my next guest is. Uh, Debbie Schiffer Blades will be there representing American Digger Magazine. However, myself will be over at the main American Digger dig we're doing in Suffolk this year. Oh, okay. Well, I will actually be, um, it was just kind of a little mistake on my part when I arranged the trip, but Debbie is going to be there with the American Digger tent. That's um, her in the picture there. She's the pretty one, the one without facial hair. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, she will be there. And um, she, uh, let me tell you, I, I can't praise that girl enough. She has really become a vital part of this magazine. And, when and you super her, friendly, it, too. She's oh, really she's, friendly. She's awesome. Yeah. I love this picture where she kind of like just got her eyes over, you know, yep. real sweetheart and knowledgeable, friendly. <laughs> yeah. You scored a winner with her. Hey, you know, something incredible too is um between the two of us, we have been digging over 100 years. Oh my, well, you must've been 85 of those. Cause she was, can't be about 30. <laughs> she's been digging <laughs> since she was a little kid and the whole family digs. Really? The, including her mother, who's 80-something years old. I went out with them um, a few months ago, and her mom found a half, and I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> well, that's why she's good people. That's my people, Dougie. Yeah, that's good people there. 
All right, Butch, thank you very much. I for enjoyed it, my guys. Friend. Thank everybody for supporting the magazine. And, um, and you know, we do it because of you. Yeah, Thank make you sure you check it out and submit your finds, everybody. I'm telling you, Absolutely don't be disappointed. Good. You might just make it in a future magazine. Absolutely. It's Thank almost you. as good as the cover of the Rolling Stone. It's right up there, Dougie. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be sending you something real soon, Butch. Sounds great, guys, and I look forward to the collaboration in the article. Sure, sounds good. All Thank right. you for coming on, Butch. I appreciate All it. Bye-bye. Right. Take care. Good guy there, Dougie. I can't believe yeah, all these did. years we just haven't crossed paths. Well, um, make sure you guys do check out American Digger magazine. I mean, uh, he does it for guys like us, Doug. We're the ones. So, I mean, show some support in the hobby. Get yourself a subscription. And I, I, yeah. I like the paper one personally, but whatever you prefer. So, someone in the chat said that it's a good uh, magazine to have on the plane ride. And I agree. Yeah. I mean, I just like magazines in general. I have mine up and. Like I said, once in a while when I get nostalgic and I want to see like things that I've done, you know, like I get excited that we were on the Beavis and Butthead. I get excited that I was in the magazine. You know, yes. it's just there's not a lot of tangible things that you can that you can kind of get excited about. Right. Exactly. Let me bring in our last guest. He's last, but he's certainly not least, Doug. And um, he is actually the inspiration for Mitch's hunt. Yeah. My good friend and the super handsome Brandon Sutton. Oh, there he is. Uh, yeah, yourself. Yeah, okay. Oh, Brandon. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I was actually talking to the FBI because when you sent me the invite, I didn't know that Doug would be on this. And so uh, I feel like I had to let them know. Are, and by the way, Doug. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, they are. Um, oh, and yeah. also, <laughs> since you uh, were talking about the ticks. I've got a new name for you. What's that? Dog Tick Doug. Oh, oh. you're not kidding. Yeah. Together, we could have I, built an army and, and took it over the Ukraine. We I, so many tick I won't tell yes. you where I pulled one off of. Yeah, they, no. were, in, they were in places Spirits. we can't mention on air, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Let's keep it PG. Yeah. yeah. But um, Brandon, listen, Doug, if you don't know Brandon, he runs one oh. of the consistently best – detecting hunts in the country the kadoha he corrected me now i'm pronouncing it right <laughs> the kadoha treasure fest which is this year in october did he say it right? yes it, he did kadoha it's in october in murfreesboro arkansas that we attended uh two years ago and had the greatest time i mean the guy is on point Absolutely. the event runs super smooth Everything's in order. Tons of prizes. The location is at a Native American, uh, um, like a, there's a museum there. There's open pits that have bones. There's so much to see and do. And then the hunt on top of it. And I think that's where Mitch got the idea to run his own hunt wow. because yours is so smooth. People see it and they think, oh, I can do this. And then he probably realized it's hard work, but he, you know, he did do a good job pulling it off. No, I, no, I think absolutely. if Mitch was going to emulate any show or any event, it would be Brandon's. Absolutely, no um, the best. It it, 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 so from the beginning, it's been a. <laughs> so, like I, I, I've mentioned before, there's no handbook, no website you can go to, no literature you can read to, um, um, to teach you, uh how to run a successful seeded hunt um especially and so it's trial and error i mean it, it it is what it is and um we struggled the first couple of years and so we're starting to get better and better and learn from um we, we take everybody's uh constructive uh constructive criticism and, yeah. and try to make each hunt better every year yeah you know and so the thing is, we just we want to bring everyone together for the com the camaraderie and just to have a good time. And uh, yeah, we just want everybody to be happy and just have a, have a great time. Period. So it is a really fun hunt. That's where I met Mitch. Uh, you know, a year and a half or so ago, um, right. and he approached me like a week after that hunt and said, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing a hunt of my own." And, you know, I didn't really know him. And when I, when I hear someone's doing their first hunt, I'm a little nervous because I know how much work. I mean, I, 
I, at least I know that there is a lot of work. I can't even imagine what it all is, but we've been yes. to first time hunts over the years. And a lot of times there's a lot of bumps in the roads and you, you know, you give the guys credit, they try their best, but it's hard to figure out all the things that can happen and try to be ahead of the <clears> game. <throat> um, so I said, yeah, I'm going to go. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking it's going to be a bumpy road. And it wasn't, he, I, did he, did Mitch reach out to you at all for any sort of tips or anything like that? He did. Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I, I was more than happy to share <clears throat> with him some of our experiences and things that we wish we would have done differently um, or things we didn't do and should have. Um, and so, yes, uh, so we kind of worked together with this. And I've, I've, ta- I've spoken with other people who've had a lot of experiences with um, seeded hunts. And um, so we're trying to you know, like compile all this together and make it the best we can. But yes, he, uh, uh, yeah, we, we, we have talked quite a bit about what he's doing. And, and it, my gosh, I was blown away. I mean, this, his event was absolutely amazing. From the, from the I moment agree. I pulled up to the little coffee shop with a big foot, you know, yeah, the big statue foot. there until the time I left on Saturday, of course I had to get back uh, family stuff, but, um, my gosh, it was amazing. Absolutely. I'm going to run some photos, Brandon, while we're talking, if you don't mind, so I can sure. try to show some people some of the other things that were here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to just kind of play through this. Um, I'm going to let it play so they can see it as we're talking. Some of the finds, some of the people. There's literally hundreds of photos, so I want to kind of start them so they can see. <laughs> but what I really like about your hunt, Brandon, which is – kind of unique or at least i haven't seen it anywhere else yet is you know brandon's is a as a seated hunt it's always at the same location because the location is amazing but because of that most of the finds are going to be seated you might get lucky and find a natural hunt but it's mostly seated but what he does that i really like is when you show up there are tables and tables and tables of all of the prizes by prizes meaning he buries in the field tokens for everything. And what's great about that is let's say you're going to go to an event and they bury 500 silver dimes. Now at the end of the event, let's say only 400 were found. Well, a hundred silver dimes are just sitting in the ground that the participants that paid their money didn't, mm-hmm. didn't get back. You know what I mean? So what Brandon does is he would bury 500 tokens, let's say, And each token is redeemed for a silver dime or some other prize. And that way, whatever tokens aren't found at the end of the hunt, all the remaining prizes that weren't redeemed, he gives them away based on, I guess, their ticket numbers or things like that. So every prize that you saw on the table is going to be given away. And I really like that. And the other thing I like is if you get there and you look at all the prize tables, every prize is numbered one through, it seems like a million, who knows? And I'm talking, (laughs) there's gold coins, there's arrowheads, there's like, you know, silver coin, but he's got really cool prizes and everyone's numbered. So when 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 the hunt starts and you go out, if you find a token, what I was doing (laughs) is I took pictures of all the prizes and I had them on my phone. So as I dug a token, I would look and be like, oh, this token's number 827. I'd lo- go through my pictures and I'd be like, oh, what did I just find? Oh, I got you know a breastplate or I got an arrowhead or I got a silver half or whatever it was. I really liked that because I kind of knew what it was. I didn't have to peek, but I had the ability to peek. Everything was out in the open. There's no shenanigans. You know exactly what you're going to get. And I thought that was one of my favorite parts of the hunt is that everything is accounted for so that everyone re- can see what was in the ground, what their, what their money got them. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And, and so, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a, there, people don't understand the work and the labor and time that goes into like for the last hunt, we had 4,000 prizes and uh, well, token prizes plus everything else we had had scattered out in the fields. Uh, But the cost 
that goes into doing all this is just astronomical. Um, and it, it's just uh, seated hunts are tough. And so, um, and a lot of times, just kind of like before lunch, like a lot of times the fields get like hunted out and like, oh, we're not finding anything and people get disinterested and whatnot. But so what we want to do is have more out in the fields, um, especially the silver and uh, or tokens for the silver and silver and relics and different things like that. Caches of things. And but also, um, you know, so they're going to be like, maybe 50 like big prizes they're going to be more too but um but we just want people to keep they people want to find things they don't want to stop digging things so we're going to have a lot of cool stuff out there um sort of like what mitch had i mean there was a lot of stuff out there that was really cool um so like i said we're just trying to improve each time and make it better and better and um it's all about people just having a good time period I'm really curious to see how you could even possibly improve. I, I, I think so highly of your hunt. Um, all the manufacturers come out for yours. You know, obviously we're with Nocta. Uh, Garrett's always there. Mind lab. I saw this year XP is coming, which is a rarity to get XP to come out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so congratulations. Yeah. Our, our friend Merrill, who we've hunted a bit before. Yes. Uh, yeah, really awesome. nice guy. Um, you, you give away gold coin prizes. And yes, I thought you even was it, was there even cash prizes? I don't remember. Was it gold yeah. coins? So no, so I have to write this down because I have so much going on, so many adventures coming up soon. Like okay. So this is my teleprompter right here. Okay. So I'm gonna pause um, this and bring up I think I actually have a, a picture too. So you go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So aside from the so basically we'll have like three thousand um tokens for the silver coins which we'll probably have some rosies buried you know out there um but that's not going to be any of the token prizes as far as i know um it's mainly going to be mercs barbers and bigger silver coins you know whatever but so aside from all that we're going to have two twenty five hundred dollar cash prizes Wow. Uh, or there'll be two. I mean, these are tokens and they'll be stamped, and you'll know when you find them. And 20 $500 cash prize tokens, 20 wow. 100 cash prize tokens, and then, of course, 50 um, like really nice prizes. Um, we're going to cut down on all the little arrowhead cases. We just want it to, uh, uh, most of the token prizes we want it to be kind of epic and, and 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 so you can have really something really cool silver bars uh maybe a native american pot you know or whatever just something really cool well and, and I'm, i know there's going to be a ton of detectors probably given away too from the manufacturers oh, yeah. on top yeah. of yes. all the prizes that you have i mean doug can you imagine finding a token in the ground you rub it off you see the number on it. You know, you look at your chart thinking, oh, did I get a barber dime? And you're like, oh, I just got $2,500 cash. I, I would love to go home with that. Yes. Every, every hole is like a lottery ticket. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just, yeah. I find that so yeah. interesting, you know? And yeah, the best so, thing well, is, is, well, is, so go ahead. You no, know, you go ahead. I'm going to, I cut you off. No, no, no. I, I was going to say, so <laughs> he may be listening. I don't know. But so I saw a guy at the uh, Missouri hunt, and so we actually because we're trying to spread it out more to where more people can win, you know, or be, you know whatever uh, to make it more enjoyable for more people. But so we, so we had uh, two I think five thousand dollar cash uh, prize tokens, and so I actually saw one of the guys from Texas I believe um, at the Missouri hunt. And <laughs> I just happened to pass by him and he actually won one of the, um, he had the $5,000 token. Um, and, uh, it, anyway, so I, I walked by him. I said, Hey man, I said, Hey, uh, do you, do you mind loaning me like 50 bucks, man? You know? And he started laughing <laughs> anyways. It, 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 yeah, it was great. But yeah, so we're just trying to spread it out more and make more 
more people happy and a lot of people here's the th- here, okay here's the thing a lot of people come to seated hunts and just <clears throat> they want to get their money back do their thing and leave and for a lot of them unfortunately it's not about the camaraderie it's not about the experience it's and, and i understand but um i don't know M- my heart's different like i i just uh I don't think that way. And and, um, so we just want to make it as enjoyable as we can for anybody who attends. So we try to improve every year. Uh, Sorry, Doug. When we were there last time, uh, we went over and I think we were talking to Bell's, who I saw in the chat too. Right. And and Bell's husband, I think, had two cash tokens that he found Yes. Like, what are the odds of that? Uh, and then I was like, oh, we got to get a picture of your two cash tokens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His name is Mike, by the way. Mike? Okay, I apologize. And the thing about it is, so, like, for me, like, uh, this is sort of a disclaimer, so I guess. Um, so, basically, I, I, I'm not in charge of any of the ticket sales Anything like that, the Kamaw Indian Villages, and they are responsible for all the prizes, all everything that's purchased for the hunt. And um, so uh, I guess what I'm saying is uh, if it, it's tough for somebody that I'm, I'm basically just the host for the hunt, and it's tough sometimes for people who are hosting the hunt. Um, because we take a lot of flat for things, the, the, the bumps, the hiccups, and different things like that. Um, but um, anyways, just be mindful. Like I said at the Missouri Hunt, just be mindful um, that we're trying to do our best, period. And, and, and mm-hmm. just just to make, make it a good event, a good time for everyone. No, I think everyone's going to have a good time. You, you, your events are always good. They're, they're on point. The uh, I forget the gentleman's name that owns the museum. Uh, I think he owns an antique yeah. store in town. Yeah, too, Sam Johnson. He? Sam Johnson. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. A couple of. Yeah. Sam. Awesome guy. Awesome. Really guy. nice guy. If absolutely. you go, if you're going in for the uh, hunt, there's also I think it's the last public diamond mine right around the corner, a few miles, where you can walk this field that they turn over on a regular basis. And people find diamonds, Doug, right on the surface, hundreds every year. And you just walk it or you can sift whatever you want to do. Uh, every other diamond mine, from what I understand, is is a private claim. This is the yeah. only one. So you, you can also do that right around the corner. And uh, every year you see a story online of someone that finds some big mama jama diamond in that field. Right. Yes, How absolutely. Many- and 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 – Go ahead. No, you uh, how go. Many you go. Will be sold for the event, um, Brandon. Uh, so far, it it generally goes kind of slow. Uh, I think maybe around a hundred. I don't keep up with it all that much. Um, like I said, they deal with all that. I I touch base here and there. Um, but uh, yeah. So so there are three hundred tickets available. But so speaking okay. of the diamond mine, so yes, that is the only public diamond mine in the world. Oh, the world. And, um, in the world. and so one of the most amazing men, a great friend of mine, Mr. Glenn Worthington, uh, will be set up at Treasure Fest. I'll advertise that. So what's, I, I think I already did. Um, so he'll be set up there. And uh, he has tons of books. He's found well over a hundred diamonds. Um, and my gosh, he, he's like an encyclopedia, uh, 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 for the diamond mine. And, uh, so yeah, so he'll be set up there, but just a few minutes down the road. My gosh, yeah. if you get a chance to go, go, he'll be there. I know for a fact, on Thursday, uh, a couple of the people that get a chance to go by on Thursday, before, which would be the tenth, I think. Um, yeah, stop by and and, uh, and um, yeah, say hi. But yes, it's a wonderful place to visit. 
so Doug, you got the diamond mine, you got a gazillion prizes, you got cash money you can win. There's a whole bunch of detectors. You got all the Native American Museum and the open pits and all that <laughs> stuff. You got the diamond mine around the corner. And best of all, Doug, you and I are going to be there. <laughs> yes. But well, no, seriously, he's got a star-studded lineup, you know, as far as the detecting world goes. Yeah. He's got the Duck Dynasty guys are going to be there, and I haven't even met them at an event yet, so that's going to be fun. Uh, Riley Bryant yeah. is going to be there. Yes. Yeah, well, well there. there, yeah, so there, there are more, and well, I mean, we're going to have okay. So, you're talking about, I heard you talk about catfish earlier, fried catfish. You never had it. You're darn right, you I did. Tried it, it. You liked it. Okay, so right down the road from where I grew up is some of the be best catfish in, in Arkansas. And so we're hoping to have them set up. We're going to have like three or four, maybe three different um, food trucks. And, um, but we're hoping at least on Sunday, but next year they're going to, they plan on being there like all weekend. So <laughs> this is kind of wild, but they actually live here in Benton, Arkansas, where I live. So they won the world championship for the best burgers period in wow. Indianapolis. And so it's Chrissy's pub style, um, burgers, I think. Um, and so you got to check them out on Facebook. They may be set up on Sunday, but I think they're going to be trying to set up. They're going to set up next year for the full weekend, but Oh my gosh. Yeah. We're going to have some amazing food. And, uh, so Pete, this, uh, that was a hiccup last time is, things didn't work out like it was supposed to or like they were supposed to and people had to stand in line forever for food that's a big deal and so i like the way mitch had his set up um with all that people just you know they didn't have to wait and so um yeah that's a big change we're gonna have this year so. okay well hey like i said i didn't i had no complaints over there now i I remember when we had food, there was a little bit of a line at your event, which is understandable to all those people, but I didn't think it was a, you know, uh, anything too, too long. Um, <laughs> but I think it's going to be great. I mean, Brandon, you always knock it out of the park. I'm sure well, that the event, what, what's your ticket capacity that you would try to sell out for? Yeah. What well, well, we sell 300 tickets, <clears throat> excuse me, but we have, um, we have 25 sponsor tickets in, in addition to that, that because of people who donate things and sponsor the event, they obviously hunt as well. And then um, anyone who purchases, purchases a ticket, uh, whether it be a parent, a grandparent, whatever um, a family member can bring a child um, or children 12 and under, and that's free. So, um, Oh, that could so, be yeah, well maybe, over 300. Oh, oh, yeah. No, no, absolutely. We, I feel like after I announce all the things that are going to be coming up soon, um, yeah, it, I believe it's going to sell out fairly quick. So, I think it's going to sell out too. I mean, uh, it's a home run every year. Uh, I didn't want to keep you this late. I know you said you were really tired, but I appreciate you sharing everything about the event. Let me pause this real quick, Doug, so I can – say a proper goodbye to Brandon for coming on. Um, no, thank you for coming on, taking time out of your day. You were yawning in the pre-show. I yeah. know you've been up since who knows what time. Um, oh, I'm yeah. I'm plugging it. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, I told my wife that last year, I said, hon, I'm only going to try to go to like three or four events this year because, you know, I'm married and I want to stay that way. You know what I mean, Brandon? But <laughs> yes, Treasure I Fest was you. one of them. <laughs> yeah, Treasure Fest was one of them. So I know we're really excited. Um, we're definitely going to be there, Doug and I. My buddy Rich is trying to come too because he loves native stuff. So awesome. we'll see. Um, we will be maybe be there in force. And whether I get to hunt or not, I know I'm going to see a lot of smiles on faces when I see these tokens come in and some of the prizes go out. Oh, absolutely. Doug, do you have any questions yeah. for Brandon before we cut him loose? Yeah, there was a uh, question in the chat. Uh, uh, someone wanted to know, is there a reduced fee if you can only attend one day of the event? So we do not have that set up yet. And, and because that, 
interferes with the uh, attendees, like the amount of attendees. We're trying to, I don't know how we can work that out. Like that's, that's, uh, I don't know. That's something we're going to have to work on. We're going to try to do that. Um, We'll see. All right, As but of it, right it, now, we, no, for this hunt, no. But maybe for the future, yeah. possibly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I that wonder if you could true. transfer your ticket. Like if you if you yes. couldn't go, maybe you could. Yeah, you could have a different guy go Sunday L- for you and split yeah, the cost. As, listen, uh, here's the deal. Yeah, if something comes up, we are totally, we understand. <clears throat> and if, if you can't make it, you can sell your ticket. Or you can use it for a future hunt. Absolutely. Oh, look at that, Doug. A future 100. hunt. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you 100%. can't make it, Doug can bring two machines and swing with both hands and maybe find twice as many things. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I got to call the FBI real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, originally, I didn't know if Doug was going to come, and then Doug was able to come. So I know. This, yeah, he, he site. Told me, yeah, he told me at the Missouri hunt. I, I was excited. Even yeah. though I was kind of like I, on Facebook, you, I was like, eh, yeah. you, you, I think you were feigning excitement. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, exactly. I, I assure you, I've had my criminal past expunged. Yeah. He's, 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 on, he's back on the okay to fly list. <laughs> That's, so- <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Brandon, oh, thank well. you so much for coming on. We will see you in October. I'm and like it. I said, as it gets closer, I'd love to have you on again yeah. and, uh, and promote it again because, hey, I like to go when a full sold out crowd. It gives me more things to look at. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, hey, we did the, uh, did, did the extended deal. I'm going to tell you more about this. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, please. No, okay. I'll keep it brief. <clears throat> I can't tell you the full story. So, this right here is one of Mr. Charles Garrett's personal drinking glasses that he or his wife, Miss Eleanor, put um, on one of their... Okay, so I can't... I, it's hard because I can't go into the full story, but we're going to be raffling this off um, to raise money for a, a dang good reason and uh, um, and, and, and all, all the money is going to go to a, uh, a ministry... Charity. And yes, yeah, yeah, it's all, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, and so um, that's another story in itself. And you, when you guys come to Treasure Fest, you're going to see some other things that uh, that belong to Mr. Garrett that is absolutely unbelievable. I've been seeing you posting on Facebook these things that belong to Mr. Garrett. I don't know how you got them. That might have to be a story for another day because – I it's, keep seeing more and more. Did you break into his house? Is that what happened? No. <laughs> no, seriously. No, no, no. No, a dear friend of mine, which I'm hoping she'll be there. Um, this all kind of stemmed from a comment she made when I announced that Garrett was going to be sponsoring the event. And I quickly deleted it because I thought, oh, my gosh. Anyways. It'll all make sense when she tells the story and I'll tell the story and she'll be there. Um, but it is absolutely amazing. And it's no coincidence. Be able to win yourself a piece of detecting history. <laughs> yeah. and, um, you, know, you know, that's one of the names that go back as far as this hobby does. So to own a piece <laughs> of that dog, that's like owning a piece of like, uh, like Muhammad Ali memorabilia, you know? <laughs> Doug, you awake? Hello. Uh, maybe he can't hear me i'm not sure (laughs) (laughs) he has narcolepsy but his eyes are still open this is what happens when we hunt and fly together like i just get no reaction from him yeah (laughs) what are you doing i I froze up there for a minute oh oh, okay you froze up all right i wasn't sure i didn't i didn't know if you took one of butch's Uh, magazines and took a trip my computer everything is buffering oh okay (laughs) all right right, well brandon thank you very much for coming in i really appreciate it my friend we will see you in october and i'm going to see smiles on faces absolutely love you guys thank you so much i'm honored and i appreciate the invite and And, uh hey thanks thanks dog tick dog (laughs) dog tick (laughs) dog that's right (laughs) thanks again all right take care my friend all right
Bye bye. Be good. Bye bye. All right. All right, Doug. I'm going to keep the pictures going too, Doug, just so I can roll through them. Um, Hey, listen, Doug, we successfully navigated five guests. Wow. Which is very hard for me because you know I talk a lot. Uh, All day I was telling my wife, I was like, I hope I can shut up long enough so the guests can speak. You know what I mean? Like, I just. Me get something in edgewise. No, I don't care about you, really. It's just me, you know. I know. Um, but in the chat, too, I want to say hellos. I see Mike uh, Kudrick, who has got some photos in the slideshow. Yeah. Uh, Pink Power Alley Treasure Hunters. And Allison, our Canadian friend. I hope yeah. I see her again. Mark Thomas. I don't see that name very yeah. often. Yeah, Mark's uh, Mark been Thomas is there. Incognito uh, lately. Mark Demule. I, feel, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, look at that. Hot Mess Fish and Alicia is still in the chat after she was on the show earlier. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to tell the story, um, and it's not a huge deal, but when Mitch and Renita alluded to there's a couple of small hiccups, one of the hiccups affected Alicia, and it wasn't bad, but at the end of one of the days, you redeem like your prize tokens. There was a whole bunch of prize tokens, and you go up and you get a prize. Now, Mitch had some of the prizes, from what I understand, and I might have it wrong, some of the prizes were like in little bags. And they were numbered, like, let's say one through 10. Right. And then to keep things separated, he put 10 little bags in one bigger bag. So he carried in like a bag, like bags of 10 bags. And someone went up and accidentally grabbed a, ten, a bag with 10 prizes in it. So then when Alicia went up, her prize was taken. Not the biggest deal. They gave her something else. Alicia was, you know, definitely understanding. And if that's the biggest the biggest snafu of a 300 person event over a whole weekend they with got everything going on. Yeah. Um, that's small potatoes, but I, I meant for small. Alicia to tell that story and I forgot. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there we go. I'm going through the photos. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. Again, Aaron, that was a gold cross that he found the dog, I don't know what his name was. She's a better kisser than you, though, Doug. Yeah, yeah. Um, general service button. I should have butcher bone for some of these finds because I was really eyeballing. Them. I was like, what are the Oh, there's Alan, one of the uh, Illinois guys with John. And yep. one of the musket barrels, I think I said there was five of them. I didn't catch her name. These little girls were making handmade bracelets. Um, I think their dad was Greg, the six foot 12 giant that won a machine, wasn't it? Yeah, he was, he was big. He was big. I'm big, Doug. And I felt like, like, uh, you know, oh, look, there's, um, there's the, uh, hold on. Let me go back. Let me go back. back. Yeah. I tried to put this, the photo there is right there. This was uh, Tim Smith's when Butch was on, he was saying that a person approached him with the small mangled piece. This was the piece. I think his name was Tim Smith that found it. Right. And Butch was able to ID it that it was that I think Butch said it was a Colt powder flask. Right. Um, so you know, these are some of the incredible finds that were that were in the ground. There's like a I think he won that sword. I don't think he found that sword. Uh some of the uh the prizes that were given away, these are just the Noke the ones, double barrel shotgun. Yeah. I mean, I think the pictures, oh look, Doug did his own little uh uh, uh, um, um, what do you call it, Doug? Like a, a raffle. raffle. Doug told me he was going to raffle away raffle. like one package, but it, then he right. decided to raffle like 90 things away. It went on for six hours. He was just, he was giving away things in his pockets. <laughs> um, there's Alicia again. Such a fun time. I think the pictures are going on its second go round and it's, uh, it's almost nine o'clock. So I'm going to let these play why we say one final goodbyes in the chat, Doug. And if you have any, uh, any last minute things you want to talk about. No, you've said it all as usual. I try to cover all the bases. Um, But listen, thank you everybody for coming in. You know, uh, I was going to just take all my video clips, make a video of the hunt, which I love doing, but it wouldn't have been out for like two months because Luckily, we're, we've got quite a, a backup because we've had such a good couple of months. And I wanted to do something a little faster than the two months it would have taken. And that's why we kind of threw this live stream together. 
while it was still fresh on my mind and on everyone right. else's mind. Sometimes if you delay too much, you know, you start to forget. So that's why we wanted to try to throw this together. A lot of people in the chat were at the event. Uh, it was a really positive time. Like I said, I didn't hear any real complaints other than the yeah. ticks. Um, I mean, heck, Doug, we had a we had a psychopath living in our basement. We still had a great time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but she, so was, was, she was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mitch also sent me somewhere in the slideshow a picture of the woman and her daughter that set up the soap stand that I bought. Yeah. The uh, she tried this. The ten year old girl tried to sell me the kiss me in the shower soap. Yeah. There's a picture in there. Doug, that soap that I bought is so good. I'm on the third bar already because my kids took one in their bathroom. Really? And I, my, my wife and I used one of them. So I got to go on her website and buy some more. It was really, really good. Okay. Um, there's John Ramoska. Oh, John just got home. Uh, John? I John? Oh, I see the, re the replay. Go for Bill. Is it there? There's Lynn, our good friend, Lynn who uh, we didn't announce her nickname, but we did record it this past weekend. So that will be coming up. Yeah. Um, Kitty Hinton. Uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a name I haven't seen before in here. Kitty Hinton. How are you, Kitty? Uh, she was in. Oh, watch it. Maybe I just don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Louisiana mud dog. I remember that name, but man, it's getting late, Doug. I want to thank uh, everyone that came on today. Uh, Mitch and Renita again for throwing on one of the best hunts we've been to. And for a first timer, I mean, you know, could you have asked for anything more? I think they did a magnificent job. Oh, Absolutely. no question. And, and really good quality people too. And I mean, um, you know, I know if I took on an endeavor like that, my wife would a try to talk me out of it. I'd and have then to do realize that I what couldn't be talked out. She would jump in and help me too. That's what. That's what a good husband or wife would do. Absolutely. So uh, no surprise that Renita, who probably was like, Mitch, you're really biting off a lot here. But when he said, hon, I really want to do it, she stepped up. And man, I'm telling you, Doug, she was running all around and things were getting done. Yeah, you, The people behind the scenes often don't get the credit they deserve. But Renita, the Cash family, uh, uh, everybody, Joe Bell, all the people that were in the kitchen staff, everybody, you know, they all contributed to, um, you know, drive the cash is driving yeah. everybody all around yeah. to, to save yeah. us from walking from field to field. So I it want was, to thank everyone personally for that too. It was a labor of love. You could tell I, nobody uh, did anything begrudgingly. It was handled in a first class manner, the, you know, from start to finish. I had a great time, really. Yeah, really. I almost didn't want to leave. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, they just wanted, had that, there was that buzz in the air. You know what I mean? I, I wanted to stay until my whole body was covered with ticks. Oh, so another hour or two you want to stay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Next year, I hope oh, one of the yeah. vendors has a, a whole cases of tick spray. Exactly. I um, think we'll know better and take our own next year. That's what I need right there was pictured. One of What's those that? digging tools. Oh, yeah. Oh, that Excalibur shovel. Where do you, you're, well, you saw it this weekend. Big fan of Excalibur. Yeah, I'm going to order one soon. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens. I mean, maybe uh, if we can work out something, maybe I can get him to throw a sponsorship behind uh, Mr. Well, Mr. Tiger. Well, you know, even, even if he gives me a good deal, I'll be thrilled. All right. Well, there we go. But uh, let's wrap this up, Doug. Again, I want to thank Mitch and Renita for coming on. I want to thank uh, Alicia, uh, Hot Mess Fishing. Make sure you check out her YouTube channel. Give her a thumbs up and subscribe. I want to thank Butch again from American Digger Magazine. Hey, Brandon. Uh, oh, is Brandon in the chat? Uh, you're, you're just yelling random things. Oh, yeah, in the I don't know. Oh. I don't know what he's going on. I don't know what by. you're saying, Doug. I'm just going to pretend like I don't hear you. Um, but yeah, Butch for coming on American yeah. Digger Magazine. Make sure you yeah. check it out. Yeah. Admit your finds, guys. You might just get in a future episode. And then, of course, Brandon Sutton, who's going to be doing the Kadoha treasure hunt in October. Doug and I will be there. There's Brandon right there. I'm telling you, if you like Mitch's, you're going to also like uh, Brandon's. He's got this thing down pat. It's uh, Treasure Fest 7. Uh, it's in Murfreesboro, Arkansas. There's going to be a lot of people there, a lot of prizes. You're going to have a good time. Doug, let's, yes, let's, do not let's be kick confused. this off. Give me your final thoughts, Doug, if you're not laggy. 
don't be confused. It's not Murfreesboro, Tennessee. It's Murfreesboro, Arkansas. Murf yeah, we fly into Dallas. From Dallas, yeah. it was like a three hour drive. drive. And uh, there were some tiny, tiny towns we drove through, Doug. But it's nice to yeah. see parts of America we wouldn't normally see. Yeah, yeah. There were some funny But names. we'll be thrilled to see them again. Yeah, hopefully we get that same Airbnb. Totally. We had a good one in uh, Murfreesboro. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, all right, Doug, we're going to sign off. You oh, have yeah. any last minute thoughts? We are going to be uh, next Tuesday's video. We got another winner. No. And then next Thursday, we'll be back with and our regular quarter acre live stream. In that one. What? I think you're laggy, Doug. I'm going to mute you in a second. Just smile until I close this out, Doug. Uh, yeah. Next Thursday, okay, I'll see if I can get ahead. Jessica on, who killed it in this Tuesday's video. Okay. Along with Charlie, we'll have Rich, we'll have Lynn back, all the regular gang. So hopefully you guys will watch Tuesday's show and maybe even come back for next Thursday for the next quarter after. So, Doug, I'm going to close yep. this out. Just wave because your audio is laggy. But, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Happy hunting, and we'll see you on the next one. Later. See ya.